The following podcast is going to contain spoilers along with me, just a regular guy, talking about all the things I love, such as comics, movies, television, music, and books. So yeah, proceed at your own risk. Welcome to another episode of Just Another Fanboy, the podcast that comes at you every day, Monday through Friday, for as long as I can keep it up. You know, some guys get tired. They get tired and, you know, stuff happens. But as long as I can keep it up, you're getting this every single day of the week, excluding Saturday and Sunday. So five nights, five days, five nights, whenever you listen to it, you may wait till Friday. Just binge them binge the episodes that's up to you i don't know i don't know what you're into it's not for me to know the mind of you 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 are your own person and you are going to do your own thing and i appreciate that about you that's right i'm talking to you you know who you are you know who i'm talking to you know you know so today i'm talking about a book from the 90s Ghost Rider, number one. This is the Danny Ketch Ghost Rider. This was written by Howard Mackey with pencils by Javier Salteras, inks by Mark Texera, letters by Michael Heisler. The colorist was Gregory White. The editor was Bobby Chase. And Tom DeFalco was our editor-in-chief. Now, I did not jump on this book from the get-go. I was not in on this book from the beginning. I should also mention that while I was aware of Ghost Rider, while I was collecting comics back before the, this this series came out, I was not a I was not a reader of the Ghost Rider. I was aware that he was out there. I don't recall really reading any books in which Ghost Rider made an appearance. I don't even know if I was aware of who Ghost Rider was. This series introduces a new person as Ghost Rider, Danny Ketch. Previously, it was Johnny Blaze, which I've always loved that about Marvel Comics. He he's a guy who becomes uh, a, a, a you know a supernatural being with with a flaming skull, and his name is Blaze. I've always I've always enjoyed that kind of thing. But I I didn't again. I was aware he was out there. I don't think I really knew much about Ghost Rider. I was working at a comic book store when this series was coming out, this the the Danny Ketch series. But I I I somewhat ignored it. I didn't pay a lot of attention to it. But then an issue came along. I don't remember which number it was, which issue number, but there was an issue that featured a glow in the dark cover. It was just the skull with the flames coming off of the skull. And the flames, because it was glow in the dark, the flames were more white and blue, like a light blue. But it was a glow in the dark cover. And I remember unboxing that box, opening up that box and getting that that issue out. And I just looked at it for a while and I thought, this cover is pretty sweet. This is a pretty sweet looking cover. And so I started flipping through the pages. Now, I think by that point, Javier Salteras was no longer on the book. He was on it for a few issues with Mark Texera inking, but then Mark Texera took over the art chores altogether. I think by that point, Mark Texera was on the book and I thought it looked pretty freaking awesome. And so I bought it. And the first thing I did, of course, was take it into a room, turn off all the lights and look at it glow. And I was like, oh, that's so nice. Look at it glow. It's so pretty. The next thing I did, of course, after reading it was go try to get all the back issues. Um, now I'm reading at this time through Comicsology, through a uh, uh, the I think it's just called Ghost Rider Danny Ketch Classic Trade. Um, I don't even remember off the top of my head how many issues are in it. I've only read the first issue so far. I think it's the first six. It might be the first twelve. You know what? I'm not really sure, and I don't feel like looking it up right now. But it's out there, and I read it. I think I don't even think it's on unlimited. I think I bought this sucker because I was I really got into this 
I really got into this series. Fans of Johnny Blaze probably hate Danny Ketch. I don't know. I don't, I don't recall any beef between Danny Ketch fans and Johnny Blaze fans. So I don't know if there's any beef there. But Johnny Blaze does show up in the story at one point. In the book, Johnny Blaze does show up in the book um, with a shotgun that shoots hellfire. And he's got a ponytail. And I thought he was pretty cool. He was very 90s, though. Sunglasses, ponytail, trench coat, shotgun that fired hellfire. That's I don't remember much about it, but I do remember that. Now, when I open up this book digitally, there's a, a, a page in there before we get started with the issue. I don't know if it's just something they added to the trade. I don't recall. I, I, I'm pretty sure it showed up before the cover of the first issue. But it's got, a, uh, it's got a couple of quotes on there. The first one is from John Ford, and it says, Revenge proves its own executioner. Nope, I read that wrong. No, no, I did not read that wrong. I read that correctly. Revenge proves its own executioner by John Ford. The second quote is from Ghost Rider. I am the spirit of vengeance. Nothing will stop me from inflicting pain on all those who have inflicted it on innocent beings. Pretty scary stuff. Now, the opening page of this issue, a lot of Marvel comics do this. I don't know if they still do it, but they always had at the top of their page just a, just a really quick little, almost like the elevator pitch for the character. And this one says, when innocent blood is spilled, a spirit of vengeance is born, and Danny Ketch finds himself transformed into the Ghost Rider. The title of this issue is called life's blood and it starts out in cypress hills cemetery danny he's there with his sister his older sister barbara i believe if i remember correctly having just read it a couple of days ago that it's either the day of halloween or the day before halloween and he has promised to take her to, I think it's Houdini's grave. Apparently stuff happens at Houdini's grave. Legend has it uh, the night before Halloween or on Halloween. I don't remember which one it was. And she's there to take some photos. She's there to take some pictures. I can't, it might be for an article. I don't, I don't, I don't recall. Okay. I don't remember a lot, but while they're there, they are sort of, sort of accosted by a gang called the Cypress Pool Jokers. And they're not much of a gang, really. They look more like a bunch of private school kids who are bored, and so they they feel like they need to go out and mix it up, and they act tough uh, by wearing jean jackets. They're all wearing jean jackets, every one of them. I'm assuming that's what they are. They don't look like leather jackets, but they're all wearing... They're all... They seem to have a uniform. T-shirts, jean jackets, and jeans. And then they're wearing these little devil masks. And they're all very non-threatening looking. They look like, like I said, like a bunch of private school kids who feel like they need to go out and cause a little ruckus. And so they throw on their tough guy, tough girl jeans jackets, and they go out to the cemetery to mix it up. Well, while they're out there, we come across two other gangs, real dangerous people, a bunch of dudes in suits, representing the kingpin versus a weird-looking ninja dude named Death Watch, and he's got a big group of ninjas with him. They all wear red ninja pajamas. And there's a case in question that they're fighting over. And as they're fighting, Barbara gets shot with an arrow. So one of the ninjas shoots this arrow, and it hits Barbara, and Danny drags her away uh, to safety. And coincidentally, and one of those coincidences that only seem to happen in comic books, he drags her toward this pile of stuff uh, on which is resting what appears to be a derelict motorcycle. Like it was just left there. It's like a, a junk pile or something with this motorcycle sitting on it, on its side, like it was just abandoned. Now, in the meantime, one of the uh, Cypress Pool jokers steals the case. Her name is Polly, and she runs off with the case while these ninjas and these gangsters are fighting. Well, Danny's trying to get Barbara to safety. All this bad stuff is happening. He's got her blood on his hands. 
the freaking gas tank on the motorcycle starts to glow and he decides, hey, you know what? That uh, the gas tank's glowing. I should put my hand on top of it. And so he does. And when he does, he is transformed into the Ghost Rider. And the motorcycle is transformed into the Ghost Rider motorcycle. And he comes flying in there on his motorcycle and he's just beating everybody up. And he saves Barbara. And then he goes, he goes driving off. And because the cops show up. So the cops show up and he, Ghost Rider's like, innocent people have been hurt. You must take care of them. And they're like, whatever, dude, you've got a freaking flames coming off your skull. We're taking you to jail. And Ghost Rider's like, please talk to the hand. And he drives away. And then there's this really great panel where there's these police officers in this car and they radio in. uh, This is uh, Charlie three Baker 17 X. We seem to have stumbled across the perp in the uh, Cypress Hills Cemetery altercation. And yeah, you did, because he's a guy on a freaking motorcycle with fire wheels, and he's got a flaming skull. But the, the but Ghost Rider just looks like the way he's drawn on this panel, it's like he's just out for a drive. He's not going anywhere in particular. He's not running from anybody. He's just out there having a good time. He's, he's on his bike, and he's, he looks... If Ghost Rider has ever been known to look casual, this panel, he looks, he just looks totally cash, man. He's just out there doing his thing. Well, of course, all the police come after him. And at one point, they, they block off the road. Now, I need to explain that the motorcycle doesn't look like, other than the fact that it's got flaming wheels, it doesn't look like your typical motorcycle. I do recall... The old Ghost Rider, the Johnny Blaze motor, Ghost Rider, his motorcycle, while it had the, the fiery wheels, I believe, still looked like a regular motorcycle. It was like a big chopper. This looks more like a futuristic motorcycle. It's got a big, thick body on it, and it's got this shield in front of it over the, uh, the handlebars that looks like a big metal skull. And I have to admit... I think one of the reasons I avoided this this book at first before I came across that cover, I thought the motorcycle, at, on, it looked stupid. The first time I saw it, I thought this motorcycle's stupid, but I have grown to love the look of this motorcycle. I don't know what it is, but the reason I'm bringing it up is the, the police officers set up a roadblock. They, they, you know, they park a couple of cars across the road and uh, ghost riders bearing down on them and this big skull looking shield shifts down so now it's in front of the flaming wheel and it acts as a battering ram and he rams right through these cops drives into an alley and then drives straight up the side of a building it was pretty awesome he also has these chains he he wears this uh like this leather jacket and he's got leather gloves and he's got spikes on his jacket and he's got spikes on his gloves and he has these this these two, this crisscrossing chain that goes across his chest and he can take the chain off and use it as a weapon and the links will even separate at one point. He flicks the chain and the links separate and they go flying out into the air and they suddenly become pointy like ninja stars or something. It's, it's pretty awesome. He's also very strong. At one point, he drives up alongside a police car, leans over off of the bike, and with one hand just flips the car over onto its, onto its top. That was pretty awesome. And then he eventually drives away, and he turns back into Danny, and Danny's standing there going, holy crap, what happened? What was that? What did I do? Am I a monster now? No. And so he tracks Barbara down at the hospital. The police at this point, they have, a, I think it's Danny's girlfriend. Her dad is like the, the chief of police or the captain or something. And he is under the impression, he believes that Ghost Rider is the one that did this. Which, you know, oh my gosh, Danny's girlfriend's dad thinks that Ghost Rider's a bad guy. Danny's Ghost Rider. Oh, tension. Well, we find out that, uh, so, so Death Watch and his men, they're, they're upset because the, the, the case had been taken. Death Watch at one point during the big battle, he leaves. He's not there when Ghost Rider appears. So when his ninjas come back to him, he's like, okay, fellas, where's the case? 
Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, we, we couldn't get it. Death Watch is able to then look into their minds and he sees what happens. And then he can stare into somebody's eyes and they just die. That's, that's what he does. I, I think I, I believe I read, I don't remember if it's in this issue or if it's later, but I have a memory of him being some kind of psychic vampire, maybe. But Kingpin, we see the Kingpin at one point, and he is doing what the Kingpin always seems to do whenever we just encounter the Kingpin in a comic book in the 90s. And it comes straight from Frank Miller. This is straight out of Frank Miller. He is sparring with a bunch of freaking dudes with swords, and he's beating them all up. That's what the Kingpin does. And he finds out that they didn't get the case. And so Night, uh, uh, Death Watch... And Kingpin, they send their men back out to find the case. Meanwhile, Polly takes the case back to the, the the hideout, the lair where the Cypress Pool Jokers hang out. And she says, hey, look, I stole the case. Yay. It's got to have something in it that's worth something or they wouldn't have been fighting over it. And they get the case open and are very upset to find that it's not a case full of money or a case full of drugs. It has three canisters in the case was some kind of mysterious liquid. So Polly goes out and she hides the canisters because she she feels that somebody's going to come after him, but maybe somebody will pay to have them back. And she hides each one in a different location. Now, in the meantime, Danny is trying to figure out what's going on. He visits Barbara in the hospital. Barbara's in a coma, so he can't talk to her. But he's sitting at her bedside and he's all, oh, Barbara, what am I going to do? I think I turned into a monster last night. I just wanted to save you and all this stuff. Well, he goes back outside. He's still got this motorcycle and uh, he's riding it around. I think he's going back to the cemetery. I can't quite remember. But the Cypress Hill Jokers are out on the streets hanging out doing doing their, doing their gangster teenage angst stuff. And uh, here comes Death Watch's men and... Kingpin's men, and they're like, "Where's the case, people?" And uh, I think they even hurt Polly. Somebody might they might shoot her or stab her or something. And uh, Danny just happens to be driving by. Uh, innocent blood has been spilt. The uh, the the gas cap on his motorcycle glows again. He touches it. He turns into Ghost Rider, and he starts fighting all of them. And uh, eventually, he wins, of course. And then he takes Polly to the hospital. And he just goes striding into the hospital, flaming head, big flaming skull, just just fire, just flaming all over the place. He's holding her in his in his arms, and he he goes into the hospital and he says, "This this girl needs help." And he's got a very demonic voice based on the way the the word bubbles are, and and uh, and then it ends with uh, I, I if I remember Kingpin's team and Death Watch's team, they're like, "We got to get this case back. We got to get this stuff." and that's how it ends. It was it's a really fun book. I like I said I avoided it at first back in the 90s. I got into it. I really enjoyed it. Um I really like this version of Ghost Rider. Again, I'm not familiar with the original version. I haven't read anything about the new version, the guy who drives the car. I don't have anything against somebody new becoming the Ghost Rider. Um I know I know certain people have a problem with any character uh, being changed to somebody else and have that be a person of color. I have no issue with that. Apparently some people do, and those people have their own issues, to tell you the truth. But I don't remember, it's his name. I don't remember his name. I don't remember the dude's name. The only problem I have with the new Ghost Rider is that he doesn't ride a motorcycle. It's like a freaking Mustang or a Charger or something. And I guess that's cool. But I just, for me, Ghost Rider is, is on a motorcycle. That's, I understand that maybe at one point he was on a horse. But for me, Ghost Rider rides a motorcycle. I think there's, when, it, when I think of fight scenes, I think there's so much more that a character can do if they're riding a motorcycle than if they're in a car. I think another reason why I avoided Ghost Rider so much, though, at first, is because I've always had an issue with characters who, to a certain extent, are dependent upon a vehicle. So one of the things that makes Ghost Rider Ghost Rider is his motorcycle. Um, and I just, for, for some reason, I think about a character like that, and I just think, well, that kind of limits what you can do with the character. Because are you going to have them, you know, uh, 
on a boat fighting somebody with his motorcycle? Is he going to be driving down hallways and apartment buildings fighting people with his motorcycle? No, he can get off his motorcycle and he can go and do that stuff. I get it. But I think there's still so much more that you can do if you want to have Ghost Rider with his vehicle beating people up. There's so much more room to maneuver and to do things if you're on a motorcycle than if you're in a car. So the problem I had with Ghost Rider originally being dependent on having that motorcycle, which again, he's not dependent upon the motorcycle. He can do his fighting off of the motorcycle. But the motorcycle is part of who Ghost Rider is, kind of like Silver Surfer and his surfboard. But the limitations you get with having him tied to a motorcycle, I feel are just much are multiplied when he's inside of a car. I just, how's he going to fight people in a car? Did he just run over them? At least with a motorcycle, he can drive by the Hulk, lean over and punch him in his face when he's driving by. Is he going to do that with the car? Is he going to roll down the window, lean out the car and punch the Hulk in the face while he's driving by? I don't know. And of course, I'm judging the new Ghost Rider without having read any of it. I do remember the character being on S.H.I.E.L.D., however. Very disappointed in the version of the character on S.H.I.E.L.D. because they rarely used him. And, of course, you're going to have a T... If you're going to have a TV show with a character that uh, is highly dependent upon CGI, of course you're not going to see Ghost Rider all that often because it costs money, right? I'm going on a tear. Anyway, I want to mention the art. Javier Salteres uh, with Mark Texer, Texaria or Texera on inks. Um, knowing what the book looks like when it's completely taken over by Mark Texera, a lot of the, the style you're seeing in this issue is still very much Mark Texera's inks over ha- Javier Salteres, his, his pencils. Um, but it, I think it's a gorgeous book. I think it's beautiful. I think um, some of the panels are just, they just, they're just eye popping. I mentioned it on an episode of Stephen or Else in which I talked about Todd McFarlane's Spider Man. I said, Todd McFarlane is born to draw Spider Man. Jim Lee was born to draw Wolverine. Mark Texera it was born to draw Ghost Rider. And I, I truly believe that. Um, there's a reason why he stayed on the book for so long and then came back at one point to do more with the book. And I feel like there's a new book coming out. Did I read something that there's a new book coming out that he may even be a part of? I don't, I don't recall. I think Johnny Blaze might be coming back. And I think Mark Texera is involved somehow. I don't know. I'm just speaking out my butt at this point, but the, the story was good. Great story. I'm looking forward to reading more. The art is gorgeous, and it just gets better and better as the book goes on. I know at some point um, the Punisher makes an appearance. Scarecrow makes an appearance. I know I, I have the four issues. There's four issues of the Fantastic Four that Art Adams draws in which the Fantastic Four are taken out of con- commission and a new Fantastic Four is is formed. And that's made up of Spider-Man, the Grey Hulk, Wolverine, and Ghost Rider. And I remember really enjoying that. I'm, I, I need to go back and read those because they're just sitting on my phone. I bought the, the digital issues. They're just sitting on my phone unread. I need, I need to read them. But Ghost Rider number one, excellent book. If, uh, if you get a chance to read it, I recommend it. If you're in inter- in any way interested in Ghost Rider, if you've never given it a chance, this is some good classic. It is the '90s, it, but it's some it's the '90s gets a lot of gets a lot of flack for what a lot of those books became because it was the '90s, because it was all about big splashes and the the big pecs and the guns and the the women with the big breasts and all that. Yes, there were some horrible books in the 90s, but there were also some excellent books in the 90s. And Ghost Rider is one I remember being very excellent and issue number one, uh, very top-notch. All right, so that's the, that's the episode today, folks. Stick around because I got more episodes coming your way every day, Monday through Friday, providing I have the energy. I'm just going to keep doing it for as long as I can. And then eventually I'll stop and uh, maybe I'll take a break and then I'll come back and I'll do it all over again. Who knows? But I am going to keep going. I have a a book in which I'm writing down stuff I want to talk about for each episode. 
and I'm filling up pages. So I have, I, I haven't run out of things to talk about. I haven't run out of time. I haven't run out of energy. Stick with me, because I'm Steven, and I'm just another fanboy. Be nice to each other. Just Another Fanboy is a presentation of the Stephen or Else podcast. Questions and comments can be directed to feedback at stephenorelse.com. You can support the show for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com slash stephenrorr and get instant access to the My Other Podcast podcast, a weekly show about whatever crawls its way into my tiny little mind just moments before I tap record. You can find me on the World Wide Web at stephenorelse.com or find me on Twitter and Instagram by searching for at Stephen or else. I also encourage you to subscribe to the show, leave us a five-star review, and share this episode with a friend. Just Another Fanboy is a proud member of the Comics Podcast Network. You can find that over at comicspodcasts.com. All links will be in the show notes. Good job. Ooh.